back uh, for part two. Uh, double helping as uh, ever. Sporting chat, mostly football chat, but we'll bring some other sports into it with uh, James here uh, in this uh, second part. John Newsom, the former Sheffield Wednesday skipper, uh, rejoins us, as does BBC Radio Sheffield's Adam Oxley. And one thing we're all agreed about, we don't always agree, uh, we're agreed that Sheffield Wednesday have had an outstanding start to the yeah, season. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, and let's put that out loud and clear before we have a moan about the shirt numbers. Again, <laughs> again. Yes, I mean, this, this has been a particular bone <laughs> of contention for, for commentators. It has. Uh, the blue and white striped shirt with the gold and white numbers. Go very, is it really golden? There's, is there's it? a bit of gold, I think, uh, around the edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, very, dis very difficult to read from a distance. I would say impossible to read from okay, a distance. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go I'll, with that. I'm That's not going fine. with very difficult. Maybe your eyesight's better than mine. <laughs> what does the... Uh, y well... He's younger than me as well, Mr. Newsom. <laughs> what do you say? Do you say difficult to read or impossible to read? Impossible to read. Thank you. But there is an argument, oh, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, <laughs> is that, you know, d determined by position, and obviously, the, you know, the players don't look that similar, surely mm -hmm. you're gonna, you can tell that way, can't you? Um, well, look, uh, uh, do you know what? What about a corner? Yeah. What about a corner set piece? Yeah. yeah. A crowded what about box? A set piece on the far side. You'll start on the cop. It's a Set piece. But could, the, you see the the but could you see the numbers anyway? If it was so crowded. Well, when they're running away with their arms in the air. Well, they yeah, would. true. That is true. Or, you know. I am just devil's advocate. I write <laughs> down alongside players now that once I've recognised them, I write down what their boot colour is. Yeah, right, unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, sometimes they were, several are wearing the same yeah. uh, yeah. colour boots. Five or six now with illuminous <laughs> yeah. yellow or illuminous orange. You've got a better chance of seeing the small numbers on the shorts yep. than you have the supposedly large numbers on the back. Anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any chance of getting it changed, Sheffield Wednesday, so that we can see. And I think it's more customer friendly. What about visit? Well, I know you probably couldn't care less about visiting supporters. <laughs> uh, but, you know, those who pay to watch should be able to identify. And uh, this is not just aimed at one club. Apparently, West Broms are a nightmare yep. as well. Reddings have been, QPRs. Yes, this is not just about yep. one team. But it's the fans. The fans want the stripes, don't they? That's the thing. More yeah. stripes, the better. That's the, what they say. You know, it's I good do. to have the stripes, but that's what they're all saying. Oh, so. I've seen stripes. What about you? Yeah? You like the stripes, with? but like we just said, you know, you could have the, you could have a full stripe kit and if you want a number on the back, you could have a, a block put with a number. <laughs> what do you think you could have about, best of both worlds, couldn't you? What do you Correct. think about the practice of people wearing replica kit? <laughs> At matches? <laughs> Grown men? <laughs> <laughs> no, not for me. <laughs> We've set him up here because yeah. we had a hilarious chat before we did. <laughs> I don't know how the subject even came up, yeah. and he went on a rant, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Come on, repeat. You something. made, you made, you made the on. point about. Well, I think the so point was what, what other what other sport? You, you know, I asked you, James. Do you know when you go to the cricket, do you wear your whites? Mm, absolutely not. No. You know, you don't go to watch the Olympics in your running kit. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So why why do grown men feel the need to wear football shirts? I just sometimes they wear the full kit as well. <laughs> yeah, Shorts. yeah, yeah. I think there's we don't need know, special don't, cases. Yeah. They are. You don't need to um, say what they're described as. <laughs> but you know, I know I wore one when I was a man, but I, I was getting paid for it, and it was my job. <laughs> but I wouldn't be seen dead in a football kit <laughs> outside of playing football. I couldn't understand it if you played five a side or yeah, you know, yeah. yeah you know, I, just, heard, it's, I don't know. It's just a I heard that when you cook a meal at home, that you wear a, sh a full chef's, chef's outfit, outfit as well, outfit. don't you? you? Well, if you were, <laughs> if you were that kind of guy, you would do, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't. You know, I won't okay. even tell you what I clean the I, house in. I never. You know, it's the thing. I, I just become so commonplace. For guys wearing fo and women wearing f football kit that I never even gave given it a thought. When you bring it down to that level, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's, it's all about. It's, oh, it's all the commercial aspects of football now, yeah. it, isn't it? Every, every season, there's. Can you remember when they used to just change the the home strip once every two years? Now you've got three kits out every year and everything else, and everybody has to have the latest shirts. And you're yeah. spending so much money on it. I think people want to get the wear out of it. Well, they do the big kit launch else. and stuff as well. Yeah. Don't they? The Sheffield United had the rap artist Coco from mm. Sheffield doing the big song right. and there's all that and really good video and stuff. But I thought, come on, it's for a kit. Yeah. But anyway, there you go. 
Do you, wear, do you wear a kit to the match? <laughs> I don't. I don't. Can you imagine? I get yeah. absolutely. I get pelters as it is. We all turn up with the, all turn um, with the John Motson <laughs> coat on and the, and the microphone, right, just so we can yeah. all look like Motson. Yeah. Going, yeah. going beyond that, the worst ones are when they have the split and they have half a kit each, aren't they? Oh, and yeah. half, a, half a scarf and that's oh. not yeah, half and half scarves. That's, no, that's not no, okay. No. Not on. Right, moving on. <laughs> um, Sheffield United, and you know, one noticeable thing to me was uh, in terms of the spirit that's being built and how, to take Adam's point, that the managers look to grow the squad rather than revolutionise it and radically change it. Only one of the new players started at Bournemouth, that was Callum Robinson, who apparently did very well. Mm -hmm. Those who've seen the whole game, I only saw match of the day. And that's a statement as well, isn't it? Um, Big statement. Yeah, I think I think a few people will have seen the team and been surprised. I was. I was. I, 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 I tried to call no. it. I'd probably got McBurney and, and Robinson up front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't have Lundstrom playing in, in the midfield three. No. I've got I to admit, on like the, the one that. And, and then the other questionable for me was whether it was going to be say Jagielka or Basham at the back, but. He aims to surprise. Um, John Lundstrom clearly had a good summer. He had a great, you know, great effort in there. Been rewarded for that. And Chris last year showed on a couple of times away from home that he, he could adapt the same formation just to make that midfield a little bit more solid, a little bit more defensive, three more central as opposed to playing with the one attacker who, of course, last year was principally Mark Duffy or David McGoldrick. So when one of, you know, when McGoldrick or Freeman wasn't in that role and they played that, yeah, it was... Are we, going to see, are we going to see more horses for courses then from uh, Chris, Chris Wilder this season in terms of his selection, John? Um, I like the fact that he's, he's gone with the players from last year. Mm. You know, it's a bit of a bugbear for me, I think, that you, know, you, you work all season tirelessly, you, you, you achieve a great thing by winning promotion to the Premier League, and then, then a manager goes and, you know, like we just talked about earlier, Fulham, you know, he goes and buys 10 players and the lads who've actually got there and done everything they can to, 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 to realise their dream and then they get put on a back burner. You know? It's, it's more it's, than that though, isn't it? Because actually, you know, that's the team that's got them up. You the know, nucleus, yeah. Effectively, they're assembling a new side. Absolutely, you know, when they do yeah. Things like that. yeah. And I, 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 I really, really do feel quite strongly that, <clears throat> you know, if I was playing in a, in a championship team and you play, you know, 40, 42, 46 games, however many you play and you... And you you gain promotion whether you win the championship or, or even in the playoffs. You know, you come to the Premier League next season and he and he buys six or eight players and, and you you're not even in the squad or you don't get a sniff. You'd, you'd be, be absolutely you'd be devastated. For your yeah, success. Yeah. 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 Apart from the contracts, yeah. the wage rise, which was automatically yes. triggered in yeah. every player's case, I believe, in the squad, but almost being penalised for success. Penalised and, and all yeah. of a sudden you're not playing football again. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. But the keys, they've stuck to that base way of playing. They've got a, a, a yeah. similar way of playing and, they've, and Back they're to looking the same. to the signings are yeah. to, to fit that system Deeper. so mm -hmm. they can keep doing that and keep adapting it and, and well, gradually. They'll be able to observe Adam yeah. as well, won't they? They'll, they'll yeah. probably, you know, I'd, I'd imagine that they'll probably be watching from mm -hmm. the bench or, uh, you know, if they're not involved from the stands and seeing the way that they're playing and thinking, right, OK, well, that's my role. So yeah. I'm going to, what's he doing? What, what, why is he that showed that working? last year, though, when, when people had to come into that role. Say Martin Craney, when he came did, in and did, did brilliantly, Chris Basham's role for a couple of games, did superbly. And others that filled in, whether it was the wing-back role or yeah. the attacking midfielder or whoever else, th there was that way of playing. But Chris Wilder also has been very clever at, within games, he will change it. Mm -hmm. So whilst we're saying there is that way of playing, and that is pretty much Sheffield United's, you know, standard... He has shown that if a game's not going that one way, he will change it two, three, or even four times during a game. So the one very interesting player to me, I know everybody's talking about Ravel Morrison, and obviously they've signed some real quality players, proven championship players that you expect to develop their career and kick on. But Lise Mousse, I know that you and I went to the, the friendly at, uh, at Hallam. Yeah, and I was there as well. And you, oh yeah, right, yeah, well, well, three yeah. of us were there. And um, okay, it's against a non-league team, and Moussa just played the second half. But we were quite excited about about what he could do potentially. What he actually did that night, weren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Really? I thought, I thought, I thought he, he, he was great. His movement was great. He was sharp. Um, he came off. He linked up. He, he showed a desire to get into the box. A desire to get across people. You know, and, and, and oh, don't get me wrong, it was about, you know, against a part-time, you know, amateur team, but you've still got to show that willingness and, and show that, um, 
knowledge and and, and that you you know acumen that you, that you have got that in your locker and and he did everything at pace mm. you know mm. we talked touched on it earlier pace is 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 something that you're given and and if you can use it in the right manner it's a fantastic tool in football he, mm. he looked a level above everybody yeah. That yeah. like, even like in that second Ravel half. Morrison was yeah. was good and flitting about, yeah. and there was a variety of other first first team players for Sheffield United that were there. But when he came on, just that raw pace, and clearly Chris Wilder has seen something in him to bring yeah. him in, which looks like pace, a bit of trickery. He's got some Premier League experience, so there's something to work with there. And as Chris Wilder has shown, he can bring people in that you you initially think, oh, why has he brought him in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I suddenly shows a little bit more. It could Correct. be a particularly exciting one f for me. I don't know, just on that glimpse, just a feeling. I think the other just thing is feeling. as well, you know, sometimes, you, you know, you've got players who are going, going to play at a level they've never played before. Yeah. So you've got a question mark on every single player yeah. and some will step up to the mark and, and probably outshine. And, and, you know, you might have got one or two that you might have got a question mark against. I don't know if he, he, he can mix it and do it at that level and, and all of a sudden they take it in the stride and they kick on again and and he's had a number of those hasn't he because you know from division one to the championship and then yeah. and then on to the premier league and you know so fair play to him that he, he's giving them all a go and 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 you know he'll make he'll make a job of it yeah. okay uh stephen fletcher i've got for discussion because i think that's you know of all the roles you know if you're going to play that four three three if you i don't think lee bullen will play out now wingers in every game uh, either side but that's got to be uh, whoever plays that role's got to be physically very very strong and Stephen Fletcher is isn't he yeah I think you he's know. got to he's got to stay fit hasn't he you yeah. know that's the thing I know he's got you know he's got a bit of a knee issue hasn't he that, but um, but yeah I mean you know you 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 you're plowing that you know that lone striker I just think that the, the he's way the form that, of his life. Yeah, right? yeah I just he's... think that the way that he that, that that we set with a four-three-three. When we when we haven't got the ball, you can make that become a four-five-one. Yeah. So you can get your wingers yeah. to drop in, yeah. and you and you're very solid across the middle of the pole. Mm. The the problem you have there is that when when the ball gets overturned and you get possession, you've then got to get bodies forward to go and link up and join up with him, and that space can get too big. Um, right. But that's where you're looking for the experienced man that if you stick it at him, he's going to get his body in and he's going to get hold of it and, and, and wait and bide the time for you to get to, to make that to make that space up. He does. He does all that really, really. And, and wow, sledgehammer of a left foot, mm. as he showed it again at the weekend. Right, uh, we'll come back to, to both the Sheffield clubs, but we've got a particularly interesting... Round up. We have, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll finish that. We'll finish with that, Alan, because we might on it be on it for a few minutes. I think. So that's yeah. suspect. Uh, just <laughs> to mark your card. So this weekend, Wednesday, away at Millwall on Saturday, Blades um, on Sky, and at home at uh, two p.m. kickoff on Sunday against Crystal Palace. Uh, Sunday is also in Carl Ward Sheffield United women's side get their championship uh, season underway as well. They've got Villa away. Um, that's a big game. Yes, it I, is. I, I noticed that an announcement on the Sheffield United women's side. Made some this signings, week, by that, the way, haven't they? Yeah. They've made some signings, but they also sold somebody. I forget who it was, but they said for an undisclosed fee. So, <laughs> wow. undisclosed fees are uh, about in the, in the women's, the women's game, game as well. I've not seen fees referred to. I'm sure they. I think hands. I think you know obviously you know, it's becoming a lot more professional, there's a lot more money Absolutely. flying around. That's you know they've got yeah. to kind of do that kind of thing. Um, Sheffield's Alex Fitzpatrick um, talking golf now. He's flying. He's into the last 16 of the U.S. Amateur Championship at Pinehurst, where of course the U.S. Open and Ryder Cup has been held previously. Well, the winner gets an invite to the Open, the U.S. Open, and the Masters tournament. Um, his brother Matt won it back in 2013, of course. Well, Alex made it to the last eight himself last year as well. Big week for him. Hopefully you can report some good news on that front uh, next week. Rugby League, Sheffield Eagles, they've got struggling Barrow this uh, Sunday at the Olympic Legacy Park. It's their final home league game of the championship season. They're on a three-match winning streak as well. Could make it four on Sunday if they beat Barrow. Uh, they're eyeing up those middle eight qualifiers. It's probably just out of reach for them, but if they have a couple of wins, you never know. They've also got a big showdown at Wembley um, in a week's time in the 1895 Cup against Witness Vikings as well. We'll preview that one next week on this spot. Uh, Nick Lewis has rejoined the Sheffield Sharks basketball ready for this season. It's a big boost for them as well. He left five years ago, I think. He used to play for GB as well as a youth, so that's good for them. Um, right, if you follow Alan and I on Twitter, um, you will have seen this, I think, last night. 
last year on the show, and I mean last year to the day, we talked about East Yorkshire Carnegie nil, Hallam four, abandoned on 60 minutes or so for floodlight failure. Fast forward to exactly a year on, and it's Woodsborough nil, Hallam four, abandoned on 60 minutes because of a floodlight failure. Uncanny. I mean, t two different venues, so we, we, we c we're not casting aspersions. People will have their thoughts and theories uh, uh, about this, but, you know, it would be dangerous to take those thoughts and theories Well, they were on they were off, further. weren't they, because of, yeah. you know, the floodlights and they got them working again, and then I think that they were off because they went off. The yeah. referee abandoned the game, and then so we're led to believe that the floodlights were then working after the game had been abandoned. Yeah, total mess. We weren't there, so we can't comment no. in, in, in detail about it, except that from my, my understanding today um, has been that there's no machinery within the, and this is the Northern Counties East League, mm. within the rule book, to do anything other than replay this game, which is a nonsense. It's absolutely ludicrous. These points should be awarded now to uh, Hallam FC. 4-0, I mean, for goodness sake. Uh, Adam and I were talking about the Battle of Bramall Lane, Sheffield United, West Brom. Well, common earlier. sense prevailed then. And the, that was 3-0. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But later in the game as well. So about, eight, about 80 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I think it was 82, was yeah, yeah, something yeah. when Michael Brown limped off. But you, you think common sense has to prevail here. Yeah. It was 4 0. I'm, I'm sure Woodsbury, you know, you made the point that they're probably in a position where they're thinking, well, you know, we kind of want to look like a sporting club. Good karma will probably come back round later on in the season if we were to try and force the points to be given to Hallam. But mm. for some reason, the Northern Counties East League think that they are the Premier League because they're saying that they can't change the rules. The rules are there and that's it. Well, These officials, I, I they need to they, get their head around. They need think, to yeah, get a grip of it, don't, don't they, Alan? Really? Yeah, they need some I, common sense. They need to use some common sense. I, I, I don't think, if, if there isn't a rule in there, there should be Correct. A, 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 about this scenario. And certainly in any moral court of justice, Hallam should be awarded Correct. these points. I don't think they've, the league have actually said anything yet because they've been a bit of a tizzy about it, to, to be honest. But I'm led to believe that, you know, I, I sort of made the point that um, Woosborough themselves should forfeit it. And if, if it comes to a replay, they should throw it and let that Hallam walk in. But apparently there's all these is, integrity rules and all that kind of that thing as well that come in, isn't allowed. it? So, I mean, so, but also, uh, one or two things. I'd seen, uh, happened to have seen Woosborough Bridge. Uh, this is play at uh, Sandygate at Hallam back in March or April. They didn't cover themselves in glory then, even though they gave Hallam a really good game, a really tight game. Their manager was, I mean, you could almost say this was comical, but he was sent off, I think, pretty early on in the game and dispatched to, you know that stand at, at Hallam, it's a fairly shallow stand, okay, but he was dispatched to the back of it. I was somewhere in the middle of it and as the game wore on, he started creeping down row by row. So by the end of the game, he was leaning over the wall uh, to the technical area. So, you know, if you're going to send somebody off, you've got to be able to enforce it. <laughs> OK, so, it's, all right, you could say this is quite funny. Except and I wasn't at all impressed with, with that guy. And then last night, apparently, he wasn't there. He got sent off again, right? And this time, uh, I'm led to believe that he, he simply walked round the ground to the other touchline. OK. And the referee came over and had a word with him there. So, I mean, that's not very impressive either. It no, doesn't look good. That's got to be down to the officials, look, though, hasn't it? The guy's so, probably yeah. a really enthusiastic, hard-working, probably not paid anything. Yeah. So, and he's got passion and enthusiasm. But nevertheless, these are public events where people have, you know, got to. And, and, and I'm not just blowing smoke up, Hallam's whatever, in saying that the spirit in which that club is run, and you know it well because... Mm your late father and our, all our commiserations, Glenn, uh, your, your dad who passed away sadly recently, played for Hallam, didn't he? He did indeed, in five years, yeah. And they've always had that spirit of fair play and, and sportsmanship. What do you, what's your take on all of this? You seem with a wry smile. As long as he didn't have a football shirt on, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I think it's... Um, it's at what point you draw the line, isn't it? You know, yeah. we were just saying, not talking off air, weren't we? You know, 60 minutes. What happens if you, I'm not saying this happens, but what happens if you're bottom of the league, you need a win to stay up, and all of a sudden you yeah. score in the 61st minute, and miraculously all the floodlights go off and you've won the game? 
Ooh, you know what I mean? It's yeah. Well, it's just in that Salford well, documentary that's currently currently on. They make the full time one. Um, there was a game where the the owners, obviously the class of '92, were considering firing the two managers, and they were four nil right. down, ten minutes to go, and they were awful. And suddenly, miraculously, they scored four goals <laughs> in that last ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. They kept their jobs and then led the team to. Promotion. Sorry yeah. to spoil the uh, documentary. If anybody, I don't think we're spoiling it. I don't think we are. But there we go. It was a, an incredible moment that they all had agreed they were getting fired that That's night. Yeah, they yeah, all yeah. agreed yeah. they were getting fired, and they let it run. And so yeah. again, it's one of those. You just with football, you just don't know. It's incredible, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you, um, that is. The, the, so you make that point. You know, it is good that you know you make that point because you could actually use it to your advantage as well as you know the fact that you're leaving it, well, it's, it's like leaving that. it open for somebody to abuse isn't it correct yes. exactly um but so yeah the way you reversed it the situation well, there the is thing, isn't quite it? thought it, you know provoking. yeah you do because i've not but really thought of it like that you use the word common sense and look there's going to be no complaint woodsborough bridge have been dignified enough to apologize to, to everybody including including hallam yeah. the chairman was very dignified on twitter i thought mm. last night yeah, yeah it came across well. uh you know and he, he produced a very very good response i thought and you know it's not going to upset anybody for that that result to to stand as it should but it's given us plenty of yeah a bit of talking talk, points yeah <laughs> i mean i i suspect uh, that fuel when that the, kind of verdict or whatever yeah. is kind of reached you know i'm guessing probably over the weekend probably early next week We'll be able to have a good go at it again next week. Oh, well. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the story like you say, you know, they, get, they get overturned, don't they? It was eight, late, mid 80s, Sheffield Wednesday were 4 0 up against Chelsea. Or was it 3 0? No, I think it was 3 0, wasn't it? Was it 3 0? And then Chelsea got it back to 4 3 and then and scored a, Mel scored a, a Mel penalty. penalty. I was there, yes. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. there, yeah. 82, 84, 84 something yeah. like that. Yeah, it wasn't abandoned, though, but it was. Uh, yeah, it was But what I'm saying is, like, you yeah, know, you it, can. Yeah, all you of a sudden you get, you know, the game after around. 70 minutes, oh, they, you know, they're not going to get back into it and at crash least. bang wallop, they do. So yeah, yeah. Sheffield United last year at Aston Villa. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 3 0 up with what? Eight minutes eight left minutes on the clock. to go. Yeah. And yeah. A, a team that otherwise had been flying and, and not seemingly doing anything. And yeah. that eight minutes probably stands out from the whole season as just yeah. a complete freak. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in that Northern Counties East League office there right now, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. it, uh, there's a guy called Dave Morell who I think is a high ranking official on that, and he's a really good guy, by right. the way, who I've met, and he's very, very well respected. So I hope that. Something is resolved. Okay, so we've all got things. That you, will you be at Bramall Lane as well? I will be there on Sunday. Sunday yeah, yeah, I will be there on got Sunday. Got to get used to this. It's not going to be Saturday very often, is it? It is for the Leicester game. And you'll be somewhere, John? I will. I'll be uh, in Spain. Oh, right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice for some. Nice for some. On holiday nice. then. Or is this a scouting mission? No, or just a, just a few, few days away, that's all. Good. Oh, nice. I enjoy that. Enjoy very good. That. Where are you, Alan? I'm at Bramall Lane for Talksport. Brilliant. Yeah, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace. You're there as well. Oakwell uh, Saturday, Bramall Lane oh, Sunday. You've got Saturday. a double header, mm. have you? I've so not yeah, managed to pull it. I've not managed to do that this this week. I'm without a game on Saturday. Oof. My game Sunday is crisis. <laughs> uh, early season. Enjoy it. Early You'll be able to settle crisis. in and watch, you know, soccer Saturday and all that kind of thing. I can't do that, you know, when I'm not working. I, I just cannot do that. I I, I probably might go to Abidale and watch cricket. I might go and see a film of a while. Yeah. I might yeah. go to yeah. Might Sheffield to Club. Yeah. Plenty yeah. of non-league. That's exactly. what I normally do if I'm not. No, but you, you know. You go to Spain. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come with us if you want. With his football yeah. shirt on. <laughs> be swimming yeah. along the yeah. with your Wednesday, Wednesday shirt on. To the airport. <laughs> One of them off and off. Uh, uh, next time Wednesday you, leads. Next time you're coming here. <laughs> next time you're coming here, I want to see you in your owl's kit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's if it, no chance. If it still no fits, chance. you'll be waiting right now. <laughs> well, back then, have you still got it? Have you yeah, still I've got, got it? quite a number of shirts under yeah, the yeah, yeah. the massive. You, you know, you get them out now, and they're, they're enormous. You know, oh. like they're all fitted now, aren't they? Is that because you've lost weight since you played? No, I think <laughs> it's just you know now they're all they're all a bit more <laughs> ripped. Up. They're all a bit more John, ripped. John Newsom, Adam Oxley, run out of time. James Gregg, thanks very much indeed. Uh, on my YouTube later, we'll see you soon. Cheers, bye bye. <laughs>